How's Rock and Walker doing this morning? Oh, man, that was pretty good. I want to read a passage from John. And it's important because it's what we do here. Yet a time is coming, and now the time has come when true worshipers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth, and for they, the kind of worshipers that the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and truth. We worship in the spirit and truth here. Amen. Amen. Well, let's get up and sing to the Lord. There's a peace of God. Oh. 
This morning, uh, one of the first things we're going to do today 
is very important that we remember those who have passed away this year, who dedicated their life to the Lord, who are part of Rock and Walk and Church, whether it be through memory, whether it be through family, they were part and walked with the Lord. Those who were called to heaven this year, Jess Adkins. Jess Adkins. Bill Brown. I'm going to take Bill's flower because his family's not here, and he was a really good and special friend to me. Rob Chamberlain. Ed Duvall. Ted Gilbert. Janice Long. Robert Miller. And Jay Peters. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, you have blessed us with such a spirit filled church, Lord, and we thank you for that. We have so many faithful examples, Lord, that we can draw from, and so many stories of faith and trust in you. So, Lord, I ask and I lift up Rock Walk and Church to you now as we remember those who have been called home to be with you in paradise. Lord, I pray that the stories of those from the past will be able to encourage us in our walk with you. And I pray that we'll be able to shine your light so that the future generations, Lord, may look back on our example and feel the same trust and conviction that we do now and those that are with you. It's in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. I'd like to dedicate this song to all of our street loved ones that are going on this year. And you can bet you they're doing just fine.
Warren, thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see everyone this morning. I hope everyone got a bulletin and that you will take note of all the wonderful things that are happening and especially the prayer concerns on the back. I know I need prayer every day, and I'm sure those folks listed in our bulletin need prayer also. Um, if you are a first time visitor this morning, uh, you will find a connection card in the pew in front of you. If you fill that out and bring it to the front of the church after the service or even put it in the uh, collection plate, we have a gift bag for you so that we can better welcome you to Rock a Walkin'. Um, some things going on. Priest, next Sunday is Bring a Friend Sunday, and you can bring more than one. Uh, and afterwards, we will have a covered dish luncheon at the community hall. And the beverages only will be provided. So fried chicken sounds good. <laughs> you have to bring it, exactly. <laughs> uh, we changed up our, how we're going to do our prayer concerns, which I announced last week. In the pew in front of you, there are prayer concern cards. If you will write your concern, your request on that card, and when the offering plate comes around, 
put your card in the offering plate, and then Pastor Steve will pray over all those concerns. Uh, the 2023 offering envelopes are in the hallway in the annex. If you do not see one there with your name on it, please contact the church. Uh, shoe boxes are due next Sunday, I believe, and we'll dedicate those next Sunday. And we have a crossroads meeting tomorrow night at 7. I think that's all I have for the announcements. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you and praise you that we are able to come here to together today to worship you, to bow before your throne in love and gratitude for all you are and all you have given each and every one of us. We pray, Father, for each person here. We pray for those who have lost the loved ones that we have lifted up today. May your strength just fill them to overflowing that they may continue on and remember those loved ones with a smile on their face and a joy in their heart. We thank you, Father, for all you are and all you do for each and every one of us each and every day. And it's now we come to you and pray the prayer that your Son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
ushers, please come forward. We thank you, Father, for each and every blessing. And we ask now that you use these tithes, offerings, and gifts that we may go out into the world and shine your light and bring others to Jesus Christ. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. can't hear me, I'll, I'll get back here. Um, important, um, next week, I know we're kind of jumping ahead, but next week is really, really going to be um, full, a full Sunday. Um, we're having bring a friend slash S, bring a friend. Do you realize if everybody brought one friend that's here right now, we wouldn't have enough food? Amen? Amen. If everybody brought two friends, we'd have to set a monitor up in the hall. Amen? There we go. Um, we're also going to be, uh, D kind of went over the shoe boxes. We'll be uh, praying over them, blessing them, and sending them out. Um, very important. Uh, we will be taking in 14 um, new members, um, which is uh, fantastic. <laughs> The Lord is working, and he's, uh, not only is he, is he working, but it's visible. You can see what he's doing in the church. Um, so we'll be doing that. We have quite a few. Uh, we'll also be doing a slight uh, little dedication for uh, a Veterans Day, and then we will finish off with a covered disc luncheon, and, and man, I'm looking forward to that because this church can cook. <laughs> it's good stuff. Um, <clears throat> Last uh, but not least, I wanted to um, say thank you um, for pastor appreciation um, Sunday that we did last, last week. It was just incredible. Who wants to know what was in the big box? Remember when I couldn't concentrate? Because <laughs> I didn't know what was in there? It was a cure. Um, yeah, I know. So now I walk around all, all day, every day, jacked up. <laughs> I feel good about it. I just don't know about the people around me. <laughs> so everyone who contributed to
to that and gift cards and so on. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm humble and I can't appreciate, tell you how much I appreciate. Thank you so much. Um, okay. So today, our sermon, the message, you know, I fought and I struggled and I fought and I struggled. It was one of those, it was one of those weeks where you just kind of like, all right, Lord, where do you want me to go here? And, you know, and you don't, you just, you just don't get, you're not getting anything. Remember last week we, we uh, did a, a sermon for, for Tommy, Silence is Golden? <laughs> Everybody knows. <laughs> he was my inspiration. But so far the Lord has been, uh, he was silent in the beginning of the week, so I only had a little, you know, but he, he gave me what I needed. And uh, so we're going to start out uh, reading John 1, 43 through 51. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, Peter was from uh, Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about the prophets uh, who about the prophets also wrote. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, Philip said. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said to him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus said, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus said, you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree. But you will see greater things than that, he then added. Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the son of man. Man, that just gives me goosebumps when I read it. I mean, he's talking to Nathaniel, and he's laying it out there, and he's letting them know who he is. So, this morning's message is going to be wrapped up in this, in this scripture. When we ride around, whether it's like Comico County, the Eastern Shore, or wherever we're at, it doesn't really make much difference. There's a lot of poverty in this world. You drive through small towns, look through the trees. You can see broken down shacks, old trailers, yards filled with old rusty trucks that haven't been started in decades. Junk of every kind. And it's disturbing. It's sad. It's sad. There's a big, big drug problem in our rural <coughs> counties. And it's not just rural counties, obviously. Cities are ten times worse. Many people don't work, lack education. There's sort of a desperate or perhaps even a hopeless feel in some of those areas. We've all seen it, right? We've all been part of it. We've all looked at it. Usually from afar. Some places are right in our backyards. That picture right there is right across from Brew River. There's sort of a desperate or perhaps even a hopeless feel to some of these areas, some of these neighborhoods, isolated places. Sometimes they're forgotten places that nobody goes to. People that live in secluded places, small towns, there's no box to put this in. But guess what else was such a place? Nazareth. Nazareth was such a place. In Jesus' day, Nazareth was a village of about 150 people. Didn't have an industry of, it own, of its own. It depended economically on the city of Sepphoris, which was the capital city of Galilee. The people of Nazareth were not educated class. They were of extreme lower class. If they were able to earn a living, they did it by extremely hard, hard work. They struggled horribly. 
They didn't feel very good about themselves, nor did they have a lot to look forward to. Life was tough. Ancient scholars, I read all this stuff, and they, they tend to agree that the inhabitants of Nazareth were looked down upon in neighboring towns and neighboring cities. Everybody looked over at them and said, nobody wants to be there because it was just a dump, it was a hole. One scholar wrote, the character of Nazareth was proverbially bad. To the Galilean or a Nazarene, it was the expression of decided contempt. The people were there were thought to be nothing more than wicked. Another scholar writes, the whole country of Galilee was in contempt with the Jews, but Nazareth was such a mean place that it seems it was even despised by its neighbors, by the Galileans themselves. Nobody liked him. Nathaniel, who we just read about, he was a Galilean. That's where he was from. And even he was startled when he heard this word from his brother. We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about the prophets who also wrote. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Can you imagine, Nathaniel? When we hear this kind of news, what do we do? What? Are you kidding me? Nathaniel probably looked at that and was like, no way. No way in this world. Have you ever wondered the same thing about the place or the person or, in a, or people around you, of groups around you, of ethnicity around you? You ever wondered about that? We can all nod our head, yeah, because we've all been there. Perhaps maybe you've wondered about it, about yourself. Can anything good come out of me? Is there anything that I can get right? I know we've all wondered it many times, but don't ever get discouraged or think that you aren't making a positive difference because of who you are. Don't buy into that. That ain't, that's nothing but a lie of the enemy. And that's all it is. And you just ask people, how are you feeling this morning? What brought you here? You feeling good? Stuff, these little things, they make a huge, huge difference. How's your week been? Feel like you're at the end of your rope? Feel like maybe you're not good enough to be here? Every single person in this building is good enough to be here. And I'll tell you who says so. Jesus says so. Amen. When people tell me, oh, I, you know, I'm, I'm do, I did that bad or I, I'm not good and so on, I say, says who? Says somebody else? The, says the world? Or says God? Be careful what you fall into. God loves you no matter who you are. He loves you no matter what you've done. Doesn't make any difference. Doesn't make any difference to him. He calls us. He gives us a vision that's deeper, that's wider, and it's accurate. If he calls you for one reason or another, I can tell you right now, it's because he so desires to. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Nathaniel has some opinions. He has some assumptions about Nazareth. He's seen it. He's been there. He's from there. You ever make assumptions? I'm not going to go there. I know what you're thinking when you assume. I've seen his type before. Or her type. She'll never change. She'll never change. Always negative. Oh, I know what she'll say. He'll say. He won't understand. Never does. It's always been like that. Never get any better. Nothing good come out of this situation. 
Well, people of faith, people like Nathaniel, people like you, and people like me make these and all sorts of assumptions every single day. Day in, day out. From the time they wake up to the time they go to sleep. Sometimes our assumptions are about other people. Other times we look at particular situations, whatever they may be. Our marriage, the state of our country. A teenage a teenager trying to grow up, but is declaring themselves as hopeless only because the world tells them so. We are sure that nothing good will come out of this. Then there are times that we look at ourselves, we look at our lives, we look at who we are. We think the same thing. What good can come out of this? The assumptions that we make because of listening to the world and listening to the enemy, Satan, can destroy relationships, can, re can destroy love, can destroy marriages, can destroy a church. If we're not on guard, if we are not suiting up with the armor of God every day. Assumptions act as limitations. They put us in a box because we assume we can't do that, we can't do this, I'm not good enough, and it just goes on and on. Like racism, sexism. There's an endless list. I could stand here for the next 20 minutes telling us why we can't. These things, they narrow our vision. They close off the possibility of change. They close off the possibility of growth. They close off the possibility of loving Jesus like we could, like we should. Our assumptions can deny the possibility of reconciliation, healing, a different way of being, of fixing our life. Ultimately, they impoverish our faith and proclaim that there is no room for God to show up and act. It's no coincidence that Nathaniel was sitting under the fig tree when he made his comment about Nazareth. After all, it's the fig tree that gave Adam and Eve the leaves that they used to hide from God themselves. It's the fig tree that Jesus will later curse for producing no fruit, no signs of life, Assumptions become our hiding place, a place to run to, but assumptions aren't fruitful. They serve no purpose. They keep us from engaging in life, ourselves, and each other, and God at a deeper level. That was part of my walk. That's why I took so long. I assumed that I couldn't stand and talk in front of people. I assumed that I could never learn scripture enough. I assumed that I couldn't do it. But what I didn't assume was, all it was was Satan standing on my shoulder whispering in my ear, you're no good, you can't do it, you're not smart enough. And it goes on and on. And you believe it because you're not paying attention. And I get to say that because I lived it. But then the Holy Spirit grabs a hold of you and gives you a good shake and shows you that it's all a lie. And then he sends you on his way, he points a direction, shines a little light at your feet, and off you go. Because you're paying attention, you're paying attention to the Word. You're paying attention to the Lord, the Holy Spirit. Jesus' light starts to shine a little brighter because you never quite understood it before. Countless, countless biblical stories remind us that God works in people and he works in places that we least expect. How many times do we have to see it? How many times do we have to read about it? Don't ever think you have a pause on the Lord. 
because he's going to flip that he's going to flip that thought upside down and show you where stick with me and don't assume David the youngest and least accomplished of Jesse's sons was anointed to be king of Israel Solomon, the son bored out of a union tainted by adultery and murder, helps to bring Israel into their golden era. Moses asked God, how can you send someone like me who stutters to be a spokesperson before Pharaoh, the world's most powerful ruler? God didn't have a problem with it. Only Moses did. The impulsive and denying Jesus was Peter. And what happened? What happened to Peter? He becomes the leader of the apostles, of the apostles, and begins the building of the churches. Paul, the terror of the early church, killing as many people, Christians, as he came across, and just, you know, just not a good guy. Terrible guy. But God turns him into one of the greatest missionaries to ever walk the face of the earth. Incredible. Over and over again, God, God takes ordinary, fallible humans and does great things. God has created each one of us with an incredible amount of potential to be an instrument of his love and more importantly, an instrument of his grace. Don't let assumptions from yourself or others get in the way of being who God called you to be. Because they will. I know it's just so hard to see how anything good could come out of Nazareth. We cannot believe that God could be present, active in Nazareth, whether it be a homeless person in line for food, a rebellious young uh, person, a selfish, rich person, a complainer, a neighbor who doesn't see anything but darkness for our own life. It's so hard to see life in the midst of death. Hope in places of despair and good and the beautiful and what looks to be the bad and what looks to be the ugly. But it's all there. But hey, our faith, it all hinges on Jesus rising from the dead. And he can raise us from the dead as well and give us eternal life. Nazareth is the place where God transformed, healed, revealed himself. He did it in Nazareth where no good thing could come out of. Thankfully, God isn't limited by our assumptions. For every Nazareth, there is an invitation from Jesus to come and see. Real quick, we finish up, we're going to look at this story. Jesus calls Nazareth out from under the fig tree. Nathaniel goes. He chooses to give Jesus a chance. His choice. How easily he could have said, not worth my time. Nothing good comes out of Nazareth. He'd have to be crazy to go check out this guy. What could this guy possibly do for me? He may have thought these very things. Who knows? Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. But you know what? He still went. He did it. He went. He placed himself in a position to meet God. He positioned himself and didn't even know it. Whenever we heed, heed God's call to leave the fig tree, we open ourselves up to see God at work in the most unexpected places and old assumptions fall and new life 
and a new world rises around us when we do that. New things. Holy Spirit reveals new things to us as our walk with the Lord intensifies. The fulfillment of God's promises began in Nazareth. The last place we could have ever thought possible, again, is always the first place God chooses and says, come and see. Our salvation and healing happened where we thought nothing could happen. I've got that testimony. I'll tell it to you one time. Reconciliation and love are revealed in relationships where, certain, where we were certain nothing was going to come from it. The seemingly hopeless situations of life begin to bear fruit when we leave the lie. But words of forgiveness and compassion are spoken by people who were sure that they could never say such things. God puts life back together in Nazareth. There was more happening in Nazareth than anyone could have ever thought possible. You see, it's not just anything good that comes out of Nazareth. The one who is good came out of Nazareth. Amen? Let's pray. Lord, we are just in awe of your word. We are in awe, Lord, of the things you do with the least. And we are blessed, Father, that you can use us to glorify you, to glorify your kingdom, and to build, build, build. To bring people to Jesus. Put us to work, Lord, because that's our goal. The great hope. The great commission, Lord, as we might bring people. And we ask you to protect us from the lies of the enemy and the lies of the world. And keep focused, Lord, on you. And Father, as we come to an end today, Lord, we continue to ask for comfort for those who we've lost this year, for their families, for their friends, for all of them, Lord. Heal minds and hearts like only you can. We thank you, Father, for your word. We ask that you give us the wisdom to understand it and use it, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. 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 We're going to move into communion. As always, we are going to do it the same way. Uh, we are, we'll come up, starting from the back. The ushers will give you a heads up on when to come up. Um, we'll take our communion, our elements back to our seats, and then we'll take it all together as family. Amen? Amen. Ushers.
Lord Jesus, Lord, we bow before you in humility, Lord, and we ask you to examine our hearts, Lord. Show us anything that is not pleasing to you or of you, Lord. Reveal, Father, any secret pride, any unconfessed sins, Lord. We just ask, Father, that any rebellion or unforgiveness that may be hindering our relationship with you, Lord, show us it all. I know that we are your children, Father, and we've received you into our hearts, into our lives. We've accepted, Lord, your death as penalty for our sinfulness, Lord. The price you paid covered us for all time. And my desire, Lord, is to live in you. It's in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he gave thanks, he broke it, and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Father, we thank you, and we do this, Lord, in remembrance of you. We do this, Lord, not as a ritual, but out of love, for a burning desire, Lord, of who you are in our hearts, Father. We remember you each and every day. Thank you, Lord. All comes from you. In Jesus' name, the church said, Amen. Amen.
Love everybody because you don't know where they come from. Aren't you glad that Pastor Steve finally answered the calling that the Lord had on his life? He does have a story to tell. It was spoken over him when he was eight years old that he would preach. And he denied that for many, many years. So we are so grateful that he is here to teach and preach to us today. Amen. And Remembrance Sunday, there is nothing of this world that prepares you for the death of a loved one. But God's grace, you all know what grace is? It's God's power to do what we can't do on our own. So we receive his grace today for all those who've lost loved ones, whether in this past year or any time, because it's that grace that carries you through your grief and your sorrow and raises you to what God's glory has you to be. Amen? Amen. So, Father, we just lift you up this morning. We thank you for this word. We thank you for the worship. We just Go with each one of your children this morning. Use them to be the light as they walk out into your world today. Father, we just de declare protection over everyone, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 